Joav Loesch, I'm the founder and CEO of Total Books. Uh, start with a little uh, show of hands. How many of you have actually ever started a book and not finished it? Thank you very much. How many have actually bought a book and never even started it? Even more, that, that's suspicious. How many of you thought of buying a book but then gave up on it for whatever reason and never got hold of it? Lots of you. All right. So, we have some big problems in this uh, industry, and these are the problems we feel we should say, we should deal with, including with some other anomalies uh, that it has. So, the classical model of buying a book before you actually read it is essential in the world of printed books. In the world of e-books, this idea is actually an obstacle. It slows the industry. What we do, we turn the publishing industry on its head. We provide you a system where you download free any book you want and you pay just for what you actually read. So this is a major revolution in the publishing world. And uh, what we do, we provide the reader with infinite freedom to download any book he wants, read and explore, and we charge him just for the value he actually gets. We charge him just for what he reads. Now we can go have a look at our app that resides on a tablet device. My colleague here, Ellie, is helping me out. So what you're looking at now is a library. All the books in the library are available online and offline. And if you want more books, you go to our warehouse, which is stored in the cloud. You can find books uh, by category, search by name. And if you want a book, you just get it. You want another book? get another book. It's very easy to populate your library, the smallest decision possible. The other side of our warehouse is uh, shelves. And in these shelves, we store uh, shelves that users have created. This is the equivalent of playlists in the music world. So you can look for a shelf you want, you know, look at the, at the books on that specific shelf, uh, a pass to serenity uh, it seems interesting. Let's see what else there is. Come gather around all the animal lovers. Uh, you know what? I like this shelf. I'm an animal lover. Can I have this shelf too in my library? And so easy to, to populate your library and, and uh, uh, build your collection. Now let's go and see what it's like to read a book. So uh, it's a basic read. It's got lots of functionalities, all the classical functionalities. We charge you just for the text that is exposed on the screen statically. If you flip through quickly, we don't charge you. If you, you jump from place to place, we don't, we don't charge you. And we charge you for the percentage that you actually monitor, see. So if a book, for example, costs $10 and you only were, were exposed to 10% of, of the book, you'll pay $1. Now, um, let's, let's look at the account, what it looks like. The way it works is the Skype out model, which I believe many of you are familiar with. At a certain point, you create your own balance. And as you read, we deduct the value of your balance, the, the value of your reading from the balance. So you can read online and offline. The calculations work offline as well. And when your balance is low, uh, we just you know, ask you to top it up if it's not automatic, or we may even stop you reading, say, sorry, no more money, no more culture. That's life, life stuff. Uh, there are lots of many nice features uh, in the application. Uh, let's go to uh, another one, go back to the library, and say you really like a certain book, and you want to send it to a friend, so you send it to a friend. You're not sending the friend a recommendation, you're not sending him a link, you're sending him the actual book, and the book appears on his library, the recently added books, with a note, here is the book that someone sent you. In brackets, I can tell you that it's also uh, we can also gift the book. I can give it to someone and say, you know, I really love you. Here's a great book. If read it, enjoy it, I'll pay you. Uh, okay, so now you've seen, there's lo lots of more things in the app. I won't show you everything. But you think that this may be great for the users, but would publishers go for it? And uh, we can switch back to the uh, laptop now. Will publishers go for it? Well, the truth is, first, first of all, they have. We have quite a number of serious, uh, well-appreciated UK and US publishers that have signed long-term agreements with us with a lot of you know, tough legal negotiations. 
and, and long-term commitments, and we have over 7,000 recent quality books in our system already. But why would publishers like us? First of all, it's a new channel to get new users. It's a big challenge in the world to find a new user, and the, the ritual of, of selling the book is a big obstacle. With us, it's a much uh, easier approach. Secondly, we give them a lot of analytics. We know better than anyone has ever known how people read. We know if the book in, where people are, if they like the book or not, if it's engaging for them, if they complete it or if they don't complete it, uh, what did they do if they send it to people, if they create quotes. All this information we, prov we provide in a very practical manner to publishers to help them uh, grow their presence and improve their presence in the digital uh, world. There's no analytics at the moment for books in the digital world, and as you well know, it's impossible to, make, to, to move ahead uh, seriously without knowing what uh, your users are doing. And thirdly, they really love the person-to-person uh, -person, uh, distribution. It's no, people are not sending you to Amazon, and by the way, the Amazon is one of the most disliked companies in the world of publishing, uh, and they think that by sending, allowing people to download, to move books person-to-person, it will be exponential growth of distribution. So, uh, the digital revolution in books has gone a long way. It went from printed books to e-books. But at the moment, its growth is hampered, is stopped, is delayed by a totally unfit business model. When they move to the read first, pay later business model, this industry will fly. Thank you very much. So um, I think it's an extremely interesting idea and um, a new way of thinking of uh, how to read books. Um, and you've thought about some really interesting aspects of sharing and, uh, and the freemium model for books. My biggest question would be, um, what would prevent uh, Kindle from duplicating it? Or you know, Nook or, or the, all the platforms which have all the user power, they have the actual devices and um, they have a marketing power which a startup uh, has an issue to deal with? Well, good question. That is an, a natural question. First, let's talk about Kindle, you know, because they're the biggest one. They're, they're very concentrated in books and they have a lot of money as well, unlike Nook that is struggling. Uh, but um, uh, Amazon can do anything. Amazon can buy a plane that will bomb us tomorrow, you know, and even take to go through the legal uh, battle they will, they will follow. They can do anything. The reasons for them not to do it are A, because they're very big. If they move their platform to pay as you read, they have to close down the current platform because this platform is advantageous, clearly advantageous to the users. And this is something, this is a big move for them to close down the existing uh, arrangement they have. Secondly, the publishers won't let them. One of the things the publishers like here is that we are not Amazon. Amazon doesn't give them any information it uh, changes the terms in, uh, uh, all the time, and it is a publisher, it is a competing publisher. So uh, they are looking for non-Amazon ways. The, pu we, the publishers do not have and have not given Amazon the right uh, to do are this. Are you guys live already, or is it uh, still in close beta? Uh, uh, we're going to live in uh, January. So Okay. F at least on my end, the most curious uh, point is uh, your uh, average revenue per reader compared to the Kindle model. If, uh, if it's so good for the users, uh, the way I look at it as a consumer is that I'm going to pay much less because I'm not going to read as much, or I'm not going to commit that much before I read. And then the question as a company and also as publishers, uh, how does the mid business model going to stand up? So the way I see it is, you know, do you like to read or don't you like to read? If, when you have a good book, you read more. When you don't have a good book, you read less. And one of the reasons, uh, uh, you know, people spend a lot of time reading a lot of garbage on the Internet is because they don't have a good book. We think that by allowing you a better way to find your book will get people to read more. Secondly, when you're paying for value, when you're paying for a book you actually like, you're ready to pay more. Many books are, are priced today at 99 cents and 2.99, and the main reason is because they factor in the risk of maybe I'll never read this book. If we do away with this risk, we can easily play, pay, uh, you know, move the price to 5.99, 6.99, which people are, are happy to pay because they actually uh, got real uh, value for it. 
Um, first, just a, a, a small comment. Uh, I think generally, you know, thinking about whether you know big behemoths are going to kill you is not really a good way to look at things. Unfortunately, companies like Apple and Amazon um, have handled the innovator's dilemma really well uh, a few times, and I think you know I would be wary of them. Uh, I think they've done that a couple of times before and, and sacrificed you know old revenue for you know the future. So that's number one. Secondly, though, I'm a little more interested about the, the, the user acquisition cost compared to the actual revenue the money's going to make. I believe that's where the company, if anything, is going to be able to live or die, if you can comment on that. Sure. The actual revenue, by the way, uh, is a, it's a revenue share model with the publisher. And it's a very significant share. So uh, we make money when the publishers make money when the readers pay. So uh, uh, the, it's, it's a very stable and, and it's very robust re revenue model for us. The user acquisition cost is very hard to guess. Um, I, I tell you one thing that uh, we, uh, you know, there are the viral elements, of course, which are useful, and we are, have a signed deal with a, a public library in the US of a major county with 38 libraries and over half a million uh, library card owners. And the libraries in America today, and there are 12,000 libraries, public libraries, not academic or university libraries, that uh, they have budgets for digital books and they're not able to use them because the system for libraries and digital books is overly complex. So we think that by uh, uh, working together with them, we can minimize our user acquisition costs uh, and actually help us distribute, uh, distribute our products. And, and that's fine. I mean, with viral coefficients in mind and partnerships in mind and all of that, what do you expect the, the, your average user acquisition cost to be for the first 100,000 users, and what do you expect your commission to be on each? Uh, I don't want to throw a uh, number yet. Also, I tell you, we're consolidating. We're getting more publishers. We want to work with the publishers. We uh, want to have you know, concentrated campaigns on, on books the publishers uh, will have. I'm, I'm, I'm not ready to throw a number uh, of the user acquisition costs. No, not, not ready for it. One last question. Hey, you have, um, first of all, nice, uh, nice progress. Um, and I think that um, <coughs> less concerned about um, revenue model, because once it would be, it would do good for, uh, for the users. You'll find, uh, you'll find a revenue model. I'm more uh, interested to, to hear you. How do you think about this company in two or three years? Are you, what would it be? Would it be a publisher? Would it be a discovery app? Um, how do you see yourself when you grow up? So uh, uh, we, are, we are a distribution channel. We're a platform. We invite publishers to uh, add books to our system. And we invite readers to read off our system. And our motto would be, you know, if you really know what you want to read and you're sure you'll read it all the way to the end, go to Amazon. They provide a great service. They have a great selection. If you are not sure, if you want to try and explore, if you're, you're off to a desert island, you want to wait, uh, take 100 books with you, come with us. So we believe of this, uh, you know, $25 billion uh, uh, book market at the moment, you know, the or US alone, and it's about double that in the world. And books is slowly becoming around 10, 15, e-books is slowly becoming 10, 15 percent of it. We think we can get a significant share of this because you have something very unique. Um, I guess la last, last question, unless Eden has some questions. Um, so Dana really talks about the pain of pain. And he says that uh, you people rather pay in advance rather than pay as you go. And I would say another page, oh, another half a dollar or something like that, that, that would make me feel uncomfortable when reading a book, which is not the best book I've read ever, but it's, a, it's an okay book. So uh, especially if it's more expensive in the long run than just buying it from, uh, from Amazon. So how, have you done any user experience to see if, uh, what's the actual scenario? How, how do users uh, see that? You no, know, tell something very interesting. The only place I'm asked this question is in Israel. You know, I've shown this in, in the Frankfurt Book Fair, in the Book Expo America, in the London Book Fair. No one says, mm, every time I, as I, I turn a page, you know, I'm, I'm totally Jewish. I'm not, making a, I'm not saying anything about our great nation. But uh, uh, only in Israel I get asked this question. So, and I think, you know, it's like we're sending SMS. We, we lived, you know, until a year ago, we lived in a time that every SMS was 15 agorot. How many of us thought about sending an SMS, you know? It was like below the radar. You turn a page, it's below the radar. You know, sometimes the page is 0.2% of a book, you know, that is a $10 book. 
So it's like two cents or three. It, it, it's a small decision. You actually, most people say, serve their, their, their comfort and their, you know, the interest level by going through a book. And remember, you can always jump. You're going to, you don't have to read the whole book page by page. And what's important, I forgot to say, is whatever you read is yours. Whatever you, uh, you read, you actually purchase. It's a purchase as you read the model, not a pay as you read the model. Wait, okay. Wait, Nimrod. Wait. <laughs> Just two comments. Uh, first, not for you, but for you and the entire previous presenters. Uh, it fi it's great to finally see great UI and great UX in Israeli companies. I mean, that's, that's huge. Uh, in my mind, and just a minor comment, it's probably going to be better to go to reference and technical books uh, because you'll have a much clearer market and I think easier path to the market. Uh, the, uh, by the way, this is what it proves like as well. You have a lot of reference and how-to and uh, non-fiction. Uh. Thank you very much. Thank you. And